Hey guys, so I made a short film recently and I had this shot uh, right here. This chain coming down with an anchor attached to it and then hands pulling it up. And in preparation for it, I realized that animating chains, even in puppet form, can actually be pretty difficult and confusing and complicated. So I wound up breaking down exactly how the layer order should go, then I had to repeat it for this shot. Out of curiosity, later I checked out YouTube and I couldn't really find anything about, about uh, animating chains. There was stuff about uh, chains in 3D, and there was uh, stuff that seemed to be promoting 3D assets, but that was about all I could find on YouTube anyway. So I figured I'd contribute uh, what I learned. Maybe it could help somebody out, and uh, I'll take you through how I set up these chains and how I animated them. So, I'm just going to do kind of an oval. That looks good. And we're going to do another about uh, like uh, that looks okay. Now, we're going to select both, go to Pathfinder, click on minus front. Cuts it into a crescent shape. I'm actually going to tweak this first though because it's not quite even. I want it to be. There we go. That should make it better. That's kind of even. All right, we'll we'll go with that. Um, then just zoom in and use the direct selection tool to manipulate these anchor points. I'm satisfied. In this case, uh, I'm going to give it a gradient. I really want to give it a gradient. I want to... Oh, duh. I'll just click here. There. Pretty cut and dry. I don't want it to be solid white and solid black, so we will add one here and one here. We'll get rid of that, get rid of that. Much better. Now we want to use the gradient tool. That'll do. Alright, so we got our front link. And because I've been setting this up, I've actually already got the layer name. The way we're going to do this is we're going to duplicate it so we got the back link and then we'll duplicate both of them and so we'll have three chain links all right well here's one of the important parts one of the ways this gets complicated is with the layering order so what you do with that is you um, in this case we're going to have the middle link, of course, in the middle, and we're going to have all the bottom links below the middle, we have all the, for the front links, forward links, whatever you want to call it, in the top. So now, see how it looks like it's kind of looping through there. Uh, also to avoid confusion, we're going to make sure that these match up so it's one three two two three one there so we got f link one and when we parent it that's going to be our master layer that's going to control everything uh but for now let's just select all of this so we don't want to be so huge moving along the first thing we want to do, of course, is fix these anchor points. These need to be, because this, uh, the way we're going to animate it, the gravity is going to be at the bottom, so the hinge is going to be at the top half of the link. So we want these anchor points to be at the top. Uh, and really, no matter what, if you're animating a chain, the anchor points are going to be either at the top or the bottom. Move 
these here. Still thinking in terms of illustrator navigation with the scroll wheel here. There we go. So these don't have to be perfect. I mean, they're as long as they, that gap is closed. That's really the important thing. Like I said earlier, if you wanted, you can make this directly in After Effects. Just completely skip Illustrator. The reason why I decided to keep Illustrator in this tutorial is because of two things. One is the gradient tool. We're making kind of oval shapes, so we really want like a squashed oval shaped radial gradient. We don't want a perfect circle radial gradient. Uh, and the other is because using the Pathfinder cuts down on uh, how long it takes to shape these right to your preferences. That said, uh, it's really more about the gradient tool in this case because we're using a gradient. If you're not using a gradient, you just make it here. Use the pen tool, make this shape, and uh, color it whatever color you want it to be. Duplicate it, do the rest like we did in, in uh, Illustrator, do it here. And uh, the advantage to that is, I mean, not only are you saving a little bit of time by cutting out one program from the process, you also don't have to change the names. You just duplicate it. Pick three, duplicate it. It auto renames it if there's a number at the end, which is really handy. It doesn't always get it right. It'll what what should be f link three. Sometimes it'll if you duplicate a lot of things, will come up with like f link five or whatever, and you'll probably see that in a second when I do that. It's pretty handy. So if you're not dealing with gradients, you may just want to go ahead and do it completely in After Effects using the pen tool. Uh, if you are using gradients, you have two other options, the four color gradient and the gradient ramp. Those might help you. They didn't help me because, again, they're still perfect circle radials. I needed the squashed shape. So, moving along, we've got the anchor point set. So there's two ways to really duplicate this. Uh, one is just to select all of them and duplicate them. Easy enough. The other is to duplicate one at a time. The advantage to duplicating one at a time is it allows you to get way more particular with it uh, and parent them one at a time. Uh, and it, it keeps all the renaming accurate. If you duplicate all these at once, kind of like I was saying earlier, it, you're just going to have down here the second third, the second three of these, this will be like number four for some reason, and this will be five, and then one of them will be three. It won't make any sense. Um, so you have to deal with that. The, uh, the issue with uh, duplicating one at a time, one chain link at a, at a time, is that you have to wrestle with the layer order all over again with all of them. First, we're going to parent. Think of it. So, F link 2 is going to be our master. So, B link 2 is. I'm sorry. F link 1 is going to be your master. So, B link 1 is going to be parented to that. And then F link 2 is going to be parented to B link 1. And that's kind of the formula that you want to follow for all of these. To keep that sequence rolling, you want the back link paired to the front link of the same number, and you want the front link paired to the previous back link. So, like that. B link 3, obviously, paired to that one. Now we can duplicate these. Select all, duplicate. And I'm actually going to move these up here. Um, now it keeps the parenting, which is nice. That's another nice step. It keeps all the parenting so you don't have to go through and reparent every single thing. Um, 
it also keeps the uh, the top one unparented, uh, and you can already see like it should be number four. It's number six instead. Uh, so we're going to take that one and we're going to move it down, and that'll bring all of these with it. Okay. And the order we've got is that's in front, that's in front. So this needs to be in front of this. So F link six needs to be in front of three. Or behind it, I'm sorry. I'm just gonna do this. And all the B links need to be down at the bottom with the rest of the B links. So let's test it. This is not right <laughs> already. Three. Okay, so that needs to be in front of that. Kind of just finding a pattern at this point. Okay, so we got front, front, front. Front, front, front. Front, front, front. Okay. Now we can parent the second half. So we want the front link here to be parented to the very end. That one it should be this. B three. B three. Cool. We have six. We are going to once again select all duplicate. Move them up here. And I'm gonna move the B links down to the bottom first this time. So, it's the selection tool. F12. Okay. There we go. Okay. Now we got our 12. And F12 needs to be paired with the one above it. B link, which is B link five. Yeah, see, all reason has been thrown out the window at this point. B link five. And for F link twelve, we'll just double check the front, front, front. Looks like it solved itself. Now we are going to bring in our weight. And that's going to be. I'm just going to use. Uh, where is it? I'm just going to use this sucker here. And like that center. So we've got this all set up, and we need this parented to this being leak 11. There. Alternatively, I guess you could uh, parent the weight link to that link and parent the weight itself to the weight link, but uh, I prefer it this way because it keeps the weight links static. It doesn't move. If you uh, do it the other way, you have to make sure that you're only clicking on this tiny area 
to animate this whole weight. The way we've got it now, we just rotate this and we're good. So, as big as this composition is, it's still kind of tight for the animation we want to make. So, we're going to we're going to shrink this whole thing down again. Let's say 50. That might actually be too much. Let's do 60. Okay, that works. So, we're finally ready to animate. Uh, this is another place where it gets complicated. Again, if you can figure out how to do it, do it. That'll save you a ton of trouble, and you're, you're about to see why. The Because uh, uh, the way we have to do it is animate each individual link in the chain. That doesn't mean we have to do every single one every single time, but we do have to keyframe every single one every single time. Otherwise, there will be gaps in the timeline, and uh, this whole thing can just spiral out of control. You'll wind up having to go through and tweak the animation over and over and over again in a constant loop. Um, so you really, really want to think in terms of, not in terms of, I'm going to move this keyframe here, I'm going to move this keyframe here, I'm going to move this keyframe here. You don't want to do that. That's going to set off a chain reaction. Uh, you want to think in terms of individual keyframes and poses. If, you, if you're experienced in traditional 2D animation, think about pose to pose animation. You know, you do this keyframe, you do a certain pose, and you skip over here, you do a certain pose, and you go in between, and you get your pose in the middle the way you want it. You want to do it like that. And every single time, you want to make sure that there's a keyframe for every single part of this. Uh, well, not every single part, because it's something I kind of skipped over. Uh, one last step to prepare for this. Check that out. That's going to happen with every single backlink, because the way it's parented, because the way it's layered. So, we want to lock all of these. We also want to lock the weight link. That way we're not clicking on anything and accidentally moving anything that um, we don't want to, and God forbid we're not accidentally keyframing anything we don't want to and then getting confused about where this weird motion is coming from. So now that these are all locked and there's nothing else in here to worry about, you just hit Control A, hit R open up rotation because all of this animation really is going to be rotation. You click the stopwatch wherever you want to start the animation. In our case it's going to be at the very beginning. So got that set. I'm going to establish this first pose here. So we got our first pose. Essentially all we're doing is, is this. This is pretty much how we're doing it. And then we're gonna skip along. Let's go all the way to frame 20. And this really doesn't move as much. Because there are so many links, uh, each movement incrementally affects the end of the chain. I hate using puns, but honestly, chain reaction keeps coming up. Um, so you want to keep that in mind when you make your chain, because if you make it really long, you have to be real careful with those links.
Okay. How about that? We'll see what the timing looks like. Not bad. Not bad for two frames. Now, this is important. Check. Okay. We moved every single thing, so we don't have to go there and hit keyframe. What I will do is let's find a spot, shall we? Actually, let's just make an in-between. So we're not going to touch this one. We're not going to touch this one. We're going to start here. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. I'm going to skip this one. Skip this one. A little bit here. Skip, skip. A little bit. And actually, let's, let's do more of these up here. Now, this is a place that we want to slap down some keyframes to just lock everything in place for this one per particular frame. So just hit Control A, and uh, on a place where there's no keyframe already, just hit the keyframe button. So we've got keyframes everywhere, uh, and I'm actually going to drag this back here. We're just going to call it there for the actual animation portion because I don't want to bore you with a long, uh, long process that goes in basically any animated shot. Uh, so let's end with let's switch back to the selection tool. Oh, I completely forgot. Selection tool is B. And the rotation tool is W. That'll help you a lot in this or really any other manually built After Effects puppet. Just remember that rotation is W, selection is V. Anyway, so we want to look for. Well, first, we're going to. No, we want to leave that. I was going to close those. Uh, first, we want to look for number one. Okay, there it is. Cap this off here, pressing in and isolate it. And with those selected, there's a couple ways you can put easing on this. It's going to be kind of difficult no matter what you do because there's so many layers. Even when you isolate it, just the forward links or front links, there's a lot of layers to deal with. Uh, one, the way I like to do it, honestly, is uh, if I can select all these, there we go. Just do that. And since this is really the most important layer for the whole thing, being like the master, uh, I'm going to make this clip to fall. I'm going to keep that where it is. That doesn't matter because there's nothing in between there. That's one frame. Same here. Um, probably want this to be a little quicker at the beginning and slower at the end because of all that weight that's going up. We'll see how that looks. I didn't do very much, but. Not bad. Not bad. So, now, like I said, there's a couple ways to handle this. If you want to put easing on here, and if 
you know, it's good too, because linear looks pretty stale almost every time. Uh, easing makes a huge difference. Uh, one is with a an After Effects plugin called Ease Copy, and it allows you to copy and paste values or easing. I only use easing because I never really use the value graph. I only use the speed graph. Um, so I do copy. And that's six frames. And now when I was testing this earlier, it really looked bad when I actually pasted the easing. So we'll see if this actually works out or not. But I got to paste the easing onto all of these frames. And uh, I think it's important that they all have the exact same number of keyframes if you're pasting them. Uh, I forget what happens if they don't, if it works or not, if it screws up, if it glitches, I forget what exactly happens because it's been so rare that I've actually had that problem. Because um, I only paste it usually if I already have the exact same number of keyframes. Uh, but let's see how that looks. Okay, that's actually really jumpy. Okay. So we're not going to use ease copy on these. Um, I think it's another case of the motion, the effect we put on the motion, having an exponential effect as it goes down the chain. So that ease might be smooth up here. As you get over here, it just it becomes more and more and more extreme as it goes down this line. So instead, what we're gonna do is the very simple kind of automated way. Just like that. Just keyframe assistant ease in. There we go. Let's see how that looks. Looks okay. Let's take a look at the easing that I did put on here. It doesn't ease out. So we want to put an ease out on all of these. And let's see how that turns out. One more thing that we can do is kind of a uh, compromise. We're just copying the ease on this one frame. No. On this one frame, paste the easing. Okay, I think that's an improvement. I'm going to save that. I would like to leave you, if you don't mind, with a couple of bonuses. This shot has a chain breaking. It's like just, this one pulls the chain, tugs on it, snaps it right there. So the way that was done, notice all of these layers that stop and start. So we got the broken link layers, of course, that don't show up until after the chain's broken. We've got these. And honestly, it's been a couple weeks, so I forget exactly what's the purpose some of this served. For instance, why this stuff is all duplicated and starts here, as opposed to Oh, I remember. It was because I wanted to parent it to this weight. Um, what would have been even better is if I had done the same thing over here. Um, because 
this leg goes all over the place afterwards. And so, look at that path. That's between two frames. Now, it starts here. It was actually a middle link. Flips around. Does that. And then there's some action there as the foot moves. Some of it doesn't really look natural, but it was really difficult when I was on a, <laughs> I was on a time crunch, so bear with me. Uh, and what I think is the most important is this frame because it's for a single frame, or in the final version, it, this shot was, when it got here, it was actually slowed down by half, so this was really two frames. But um, this little stretch for only a frame, especially when followed by that, and that kind of like bunched together, is it's important that the viewer sees this but they don't really pick up on it. It happens too fast for them to fully recognize it but subconsciously they feel it this very tough metal object stretch like rubber and then immediately snap. There's kind of a, a sensation that comes from that. So uh, that was relatively fun to do, albeit uh, stressful. If you enjoyed this, go into my YouTube channel, check out some of my animations. Most of my animations are actually on Vimeo and, uh, and also on my website. I'll put the links to the Vimeo and the website in the description if you want to check those out. If not, feel free to just browse through my YouTube channel. If you see any animation that you like and you, uh, you're wondering how this one thing or another was done, feel free to ask and I will uh, I'll see if I can put together a tutorial for it. I can't think of anything else that would uh, be as long and complicated as this video, so hopefully any other tutorial would be shorter. That said, hope you guys enjoyed and, and learned something from it. And uh, just to reiterate, if you figure out the issue with Duick and this chain, or something similar for that matter, which might still help, uh, by all means, post it in the comments. So it doesn't matter how much further along in the future it is, uh, go ahead and post it. Thank you very much. You guys have a great day, and uh, happy animating.